Sports PGA Tour coverage coming up next. Hello again and welcome, Rich Lerner, alongside my friend and colleague, Frank Navalo. Frank, we've arrived at one of the more unusual golf courses in the United States. We're in the state of Washington, Chambers Bay. What's it all about? Well, apart from the scenery, uh, Rich, which is magnificent, uh, this is a walking golf course, so it's a chance to get out there, strut your stuff, and uh, see if you've got a game to match. It's a Lynx golf course. We think of Lynx golf, we think of the home of golf in Scotland. Here we're in the northwest part of the United States, though. Yeah, but Scotland's, uh, well, it's transferred a little piece of land all the way across the Atlantic. So we're ready to get the round going here at Chambers Bay, and we'll begin, Frank, at the first with a par four. 496 yards, obviously that'll stretch anybody out there. That bunker down the right is very much in play. The fairway does narrow out, too, just short of that. So this really is going to require one of your best tee shots. Uh, Semi-blind second shot, a relatively big green. Excellent line, propped up on the short grass. Second shot. On the green, and a chance for Birdie here on the first hole. Let's see if Blix can make a Birdie here. Just singes the edge, Frank. Yeah, but at least he's burning the edges. You know you're hitting good parts. Trying to move on with a par in his pocket. Even par, early on. Ready to tee off here at the second. Frank, what's it all about? Well, you hit your tee shot here through the dunes, uh, Rich. Not overly long, just under 400 yards. Uh, the bunker on the left really shouldn't be a problem. Just uh, avoid the dunes on the right and left. Frank, what do you think about this approach shot here at the second at Chambers Bay? If you've driven it down the right side, you have a much better view of this green, better access to, to a, you know, the, the flag when it's on the back left. You really want to just avoid that little bunker that cuts in on the right side. And there's a little sort of gut on that left side of the green you know, where that sort of collects the ball. It's no snack, though. Ooh, good effort right there. Almost made it. Drops it, and he's at even par. At the third tee now, Frank, and what are we staring at here? This green is anything other than symmetrical, so be very, very uh, cautious on where the flag is. Anything in the middle of the green you can putt to the corners, uh, well, if you can call them corners, more like ragtails, but uh, beautiful par three. And the tee shot ends up in the bunker. Well, bunker play is really about technique and feel. The two greatest ever are probably Gary Player and Seve Ballesteros. Seve actually was so good, he was so skilled, that he could open up a three iron, that's right, a three iron, on a short bunker shot from a green side bunker and splash it to a couple of feet as if he had just used a 60 degree sandwich. Amazing. Still even par for the day. Frank, here on the fourth tee, you get a good look, don't you, at what Chambers Bay really is all about. It's framed beautifully, Rich, by the bunkers there, uh, left, short, off the tee, plus the ones down the right side. You can see everything in front of you, but the hole does bend to the right. Um, this is another one where you've got a generous fairway, but don't be fooled by that. It's fairway first. Tough par four measuring 495 yards.
Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really, the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. Well, at least he can draw on the experience from the previous hole. Again, in the bunker. You know how to play this shot, Frank, right? You keep your chin up, you look down your nose at the ball, you have to pick it cleanly and keep your head still. Pretty good shot right there. Jonas Blix for par. Oh, you can see the frustration almost kicked his putter head right there with a drop shot here at the fourth. Not what he had in mind when he stepped to the tee, but it would be just one drop shot. This for bogey. Just a shade over par, plus one. Well, Frank here at the fifth, and I'm not sure about my chances at a hole that's called free fall. I mean, are you kidding? Well, should be uh, free fall for you, that's for sure, and free fall for a lot of people playing it today. Hole looks straight away, but uh, you'll see it's, it starts to pinch in, that fairway, that is, by bunkers left and right, and those bunkers come in exactly where you're trying to hit your tee shot. Well, that's fine. Frank Jonas Blixt popped onto the scene, kind of a quirky Swede with a personality to match his game. Great putter, too. Inside 15 feet, one of the best in the business, and sneaky long. The way in which he played in the PGA Championship uh, in 2013, that really uh, made us aware of how good he is. He's a proud Florida State Seminole, not afraid of the big moment, made a run, as you said, at the PGA Championship 2013, also made a nice move at the Masters in 2014. Yeah, showed us he doesn't back down. Uh, given the opportunity, he puts that uh, pedal to the metal. Known for the occasional flashy pair of pants and the ability to run the table on the greens, he can really putt. and getting ready for the putt. Just trying to keep this round on track. Has that putt, stays at one over. Frank now at the sixth. This appears to be a testing par four long one. It is, but once again, a generous fairway. Just use those mounds down the left as an indicator on your line. Um, hole bends a little bit to the right. Good tee shot though, and everything is in front of you. Now, this is not heading in the right direction. No, it looks like it's going to be in the rough. Into the tall cabbage. That ball is swallowed up. Frank, this ball's in the rough. You like to hinge just a little bit quicker on the takeaway when the ball is down like this? No, when it's down, you've just got to make sure that you wind up almost like you're hitting a tee shot. Uh, this is not one to be dallied with. Uh, you've got to hit it powerfully, and you really have to focus on that club getting through the grass, past the ball, and out the other side. So missed the fairway, and now he's back where he needs to be. Yeah, minimize the problems. Blix now ready for his third shot. This is a good-looking shot. Not his best, but not his worst. He just got away a little bit to the right. Hard putt, soft hands, beautiful roll. Frank, this is a daunting challenge. The seventh hole, long par four. It's over 500 yards. And a huge bunker down the right side that uh, probably runs for a good two, 300 yards. Obviously, that's to be avoided. And then, of course, there's the mounds and the hammocks and the dunes and that on the left side. That's the reason, really, why this hole's called humpback. Um, but then, a little bit like the golf course, there's only one green side bunker to be worried about, but enough green left of that. Second shot coming out of the rough here. Hey, 
Frank, I think that's going in the bunker. Looks like it. Not missing by much today, but enough to again be in the bunker. Just wants to hit about an inch behind the ball. A little left of target. He'll take that one all day long. Very solid, about 15 feet away. Jonas attempting this for par. All right, no damage done. Stays at one over par with that putt. Now to the eighth and a long par five, Frank. Fortunately, there's no bunkers, just the dunes either side. The hole looks a little narrow off the tee, but get down there, you're going to realize that's a fairly generous fairway. There's a little bit of mounding in this green, um, too, that actually slopes it back towards the player. So that, use that to your advantage. Good tee shot, good lie, and now a good chance to take advantage here on this hole. Good lie in the fairway. Good chance to make something happen here. Frank, you've played golf courses all over the world. How would you describe, define Lynx golf? Well, I think you go back to St. Andrews, really. The, the true Lynx golf courses were built on wasteland. That's why there were dune areas, and um, even St. Andrews used to be an archery. We used to do archery there on Sundays and that when the golf course was closed. So it, it's land that wasn't used for anything else. Um, you're obviously playing in the elements. There's very little protection. Um, most Lynx courses, uh, you, you struggle to find any trees. Chambers Bay, no exception. He's knocked it on the green, but not in a great position. This is a difficult chance coming up here. Long birdie try. This is a long birdie putt here. Requires good judgment of the speed and the line. Just try to lag it down there. It's a cruel game. Did the job right there. Really good mix of holes here at Chambers Bay and Frank. We finished this front side with a par three after just having come off that long par five. And it's a beauty too. Uh, the tee is some hundred feet up in the air, so you get a great view of those magnificent golf course and you realize why it's called a true links. Uh, this green here, though, it looks rather daunting, you know, well bunkered on the right side, but you can see enough of it. And once again, links use the bounce, and you can still kick one in there close. Second shot now for Jonas Blixt. Yeah. Okay, good shot on the dance floor. This is a par try for Jonas Blixt. Frank had the touch of a plumber right there. Yeah, you'd like a redo, wouldn't you? Wake up, wake up! <laughs> Settles in over the putt. Slipping just a bit, another boat, and now two over par. Moving on to the back nine here at Chambers Bay in the state of Washington. I'm Rich Lerner alongside my friend and colleague Frank Nabolo for EA Sports. Frank, what's the tenth hole all about? Dunes left and right, hence the name High Dunes. Uh, obviously split the fairway there. But one of the factors of true Lynx golf is you normally get to putt in the calm. The dunes protect this green from all the wind, so a relatively flat putting surface. Looks to be a good setup going into the green here at the 10. A 
Little uphill to this green, Frank. Seems to like it. Looks like it's headed for the green. Great effort right there, and a great chance to knock in that short putt. This will be a birdie if it drops. So, one over par for the round. Well, here we are at the 11th. Frank, this is a brutally long par four. And uh, a little bit blind, too. There's that big dune in the middle of the fairway, and, and it's sort of a bit daunting. You're not quite sure what's behind that. Well, what behind what is behind that is actually fairway. And uh, just carry it over there. That'll certainly shorten the hole up. And then from there, it's a little bit of a dogleg to the right. Now, this game is all about variables, right? Rich, if you head into a bad light, it completely changes the nature of the next shot. When the ball sits up like that, it is just liberty of choice now. Second shot. This is taken off on a weird line. And it's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Yeah, it was a little overambitious. Ball sitting down here in the rough. He's digging in. Beautiful shot. That is tight. Unbelievable. That is one to save it for the rest of the round. Just a couple of feet. Solid effort and reasonable result to stay at one over par. Measuring 311 yards, the 12th Frank seems to offer an opportunity for a player to do something pretty dramatic here. Yeah, it's called the narrows. Really, it should be called the temptation because what player stands on a tee knowing he can reach and doesn't take up the gauntlet? Frank couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, just the lie there, too. It is sitting up like it's teed up. Frank, really good chance from this position to make a birdie. Yeah, really, the only thing he's looking at right now is the flag. Uh, this is a green light special. Let him try up next. And getting ready for the putt. Has it, and that is birdie number two for the round. Good spot to be in, fresh off a of birdie. And all of a sudden you start to feel like you've got the game in hand. Now from a good position in the fairway, his second shot. This is way left going left. And that one's going to be in the rough, it looks like. Frank, way offline all day long. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a head scratcher, really. Seen him play before, normally much better than this. This is, uh, this is abnormal, that's for sure. Frank, out of the rough, best to swing a little bit easier or get after it with all you have. Well, a little bit in between. Obviously, it's going to require a little bit of strength to make sure that club keeps going through, but it's still the planning of the shot. Once again, check short. Do, is there anything I have to carry? And even remember, there's always the option of just simply pitching the ball down the fairway and taking your medicine. Oh, so close. That is a painful miss right there. And a bogey, drop shot here at the 13th. Trying to limit the damage here. This putt is for bogey. That drops. Now at one over par. Frank, this is the fifth par four in a row. 
and they're not easy. This one here at 14, really a daunting tee shot. It is. That's why it's called Cape Fair. A, a true cape hole in golf, Rich, is when you've got to decide how much you want to bite off when you hit across a slight dogleg. And, and this one, really, you're going to be rewarded the further left you can go. There is one little bunker in the middle of the fairway that you have to avoid. That's going to be you know, 320 or so yards off the tee. This whole 546 yards, you're going to see a variety of second shots or the length of second shots here determined purely by the bravery of the tee shot. Long drive, but a bad lie. A wicked. Second shot coming out of the rough here. So missed the fairway, and now he's back where he needs to be. Yeah, minimize the problems. Flicks now ready for his third shot. Frank, anytime you're inside 15 feet, you have to like your chances. Yeah, our computer gives us uh, 13 feet to be precise. Jonas Blix for par. Now, as they say, 300 yard drive, one shot, miss a short one, also one shot. Yeah, that's painful. Two over for the day. At last, Frank, a break from those long par fours. We just played five par fours in a row. Now the par 315. And also, as you can see in the distance, you can actually see a tree. Um, it's one of the few that are on the golf course. Hence the name of 15. It's called Lone Fir. Not overly long, just a little short hole. Um, but in a US Open, obviously, they can play it at around 250 yards. Uh, it's just a fun par three. But check where that flag is, because uh, sometimes three is a good score here. But an easy flag position, then go straight at it. And he's made the green. Not a gimme, but well within his range. That is a solid par putt. Now to the par four, 423 yards, 16th hole. What's the right play, Frank? Fairway first, once again, you'll see the slope of the fairway from the left to the right side. It means move your aim down that left side. It'll make this fairway appear that much bigger. And of course, then when you hit into this green, you're really gonna have to flight that second shot properly. This is like a tabletop green. Frank, it's a nice walk to make down the fairway when you can see your golf ball right there in the middle. Rich, there's an old saying, fairway first. And there's another example. Hit it in the fairway, and the game becomes very straightforward. Just a beautiful tee shot. There's a bunker over there. I think he's headed for it. Miss hit, wrong club. What happened there, Frank? All of the above, maybe. That's a little bit of a head scratcher. Wasn't that hard a shot. Well, in the sand, but it has been raked nicely, looking for something positive. Did the smart thing there, Frank. Took his medicine back out onto the fairway. He has a 12-footer here. Not his best effort right there. That's a bogey, and now three open. Frank, you don't need just a caddy out here at Chambers Bay. Seems like you need a sports psychologist. You start thinking about the names of these holes. Beached at, at 16, and what's 17 called? Derailed, and, and you can see why, too. That green's perched up there. Um, if, you, if you've got the round going in the wrong direction, this is not a hole to start on. So um, if you've got a run going, it's just a, a good tee shot that lands around the front there. And uh, you just take a three here. This is not a time to be a hero.
one of the game's rising stars, Jonas Blixt, originally from Sweden, has this for par. Three over for the day. Now to the 18th hole, Frank, everyone wants to finish in style. Yeah, the home hole here, you know, once again you head back to just a, a wonderful view and you realize that Chambers Bay was designed as a walking golf course and uh, it was designed to have fun and test every department in your game. 18 will do that. It probably gives you more trouble on both sides of the hole than any other hole on the golf course. Good tee shot, good lie, and now a good chance to take advantage here on this hole. And from the fairway for his second shot here. Now the Swede with all sorts of personality, Jonas Blix getting set for his approach. Here's to be what they call a commercial play, very solid. That is classy. Yeah, chance of going in. Could really use this one. It's for birdie. Just singes the edge, Frank. Yeah, but at least he's burning the edges. You know you're hitting good parts. Did the job right there. Well, Frank, this day had it all, didn't it? It certainly did, Rich. Um, it's always nice to play parkland golf where you play the ball through the air. But every now and again, when you get the opportunity to play a golf course like Chambers Bay and you get to see how the game was really invented, it can be played just as well along the ground as it can.